Good morning and uh, welcome to another devotion with Tabernacle Baptist. So you've experienced a new beginning in God. Salvation's come into your heart and into your life. However, you have some questions, especially this one. What does it mean to be a Christian? And this other question which often people ask is, are there things I should be doing as a believer in Jesus? Now it may well be that you have been a believer for many years and that you've lost sight of what it is that you should be doing and how you should be living. Now the Bible is a very practical book and uh, it highlights what I call the things that Christians should do. Now I'm not suggesting here that we uh, abide by a legalistic ritual focused religion but simply that we have a desire to become more like Jesus in our attitudes, desires and actions. In Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 to 24 we read the basic principles of being a disciple and this is where the Lord Jesus calls the first disciples, the first men to be his disciples or followers and this is what it says. Now as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, his father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him. The basic principle of being a disciple, I suppose what we can learn from that is something of the basic and uh, simple guide to our practices as Christians. This is perhaps a, an excellent definition of what we would say is our calling as Christians or as disciples. Or it's the, it highlights the effect that the new beginning that we've had in God should have on our daily living. The first thing we notice is it says, follow me. Jesus said to these men, follow me. It says that in verse 19. And so the first thing that it is to be a disciple is to be a follower of Jesus. And what we can gain from that little passage is this, that to be a follower of Jesus we have to have that radical life-changing encounter with Jesus himself. That's exactly what happened to these men here uh, in this passage. They were fishermen and they were about their daily task. Jesus came along, intervened in their lives and they had this radical change of direction. They responded to the call. They left their old life. They experienced a new beginning with Jesus. See, the gospel message is one about repentance. It says that previously in verse 17 of that chapter. It says, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so repentance is that initial step. It is that time when we realize our situation without God and we need to change our direction. We need to be turned completely around. That's what conversion means. We are turned from one way to go another way and so we have this spiritual experience this new birth and uh, we are going in a different direction and today we have to ask ourselves this question and just consider this for yourself what difference has the Lord made in your life have you had that radical life-changing encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and so we have this instruction then he says follow me now this little phrase, follow me, means come after me or come behind me. It implies that we are not simply follow, to follow somebody, but we are also to receive from them, receive their teachings, receive their doctrines, and therefore be an imitator of the one who we are following. So when Jesus says, follow me, he says, learn from me and be like me. Imitate what I do and who I am. That's a huge difference, isn't it, to just saying follow somebody or follow something uh, because it really affects who we are. It affects our everyday uh, life. 
And so the Bible uses this term, disciple. And uh, this is not only one who follows a person, but also follows and accepts their teachings. See, if we are Christians and if we are disciples, then we should be keen to discover the teachings of Jesus and apply them to our lives. And that's what, when Jesus says, follow me, that's what he's instructing us to do. He's saying, learn of me and aim to become more like me, accept my teachings. Do you desire to know more about your faith? Do you desire to know more about the teachings of Jesus? If you say you are a disciple, then you must be seeking to follow the teachings of Jesus and not simply make the bold statement, I am a Christian. Because that statement has a dramatic and wide-ranging impact on our lives. And so it's easy to say it, isn't it? Easy to say, oh yes, I'm a Christian. But what impact is that having on you on a daily basis? Are you following Jesus as he desires? Learning of him through the Bible, prayer, fellowship and by the means of the Spirit? This is the basic requirement of anyone who calls themselves a disciple. It's interesting to read through the Gospels. And uh, we all love the Gospel stories, don't we? We love to uh, read the stories of the, the special miracles that Jesus did and all the uh, things that occurred in that uh, period of time. But when you read the Gospels next time, have a look and just make a note of how often it says that Jesus sat down to teach people. Whether that was his disciples or whether that were the crowds who came to listen to him. And what he was doing all the time was teaching the principles of the kingdom of God. That was the central aspect of his ministry. Yes, he came to bring salvation, the gospel, to warn that the kingdom of God was at hand, but also to teach the principles of the kingdom. The passage that we know, Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7, uh, we know it as the Sermon on the Mount, don't we? And that is basically a summary of Jesus' teaching on the kingdom of God. And there's so much there uh, that we can learn from it. And we're not going to look at that. Uh, it's too much of a a vast subject for us to deal with in just a few moments here this morning. But what I want to do, I just want to emphasize this fact. It says in Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 2, When he saw the crowds, he went up to, onto the mountain, and he sat down, and his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and began teaching them, saying, and then he goes into this, what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. But notice it says he sat down and he began to teach them. And then we also see this in Matthew chapter 13, a little further on in the Gospel account. He says, That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea, and a large crowd came to him. So he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach, and he spoke many things to them in parables. And so here we see how Jesus uh, taught the crowds. He taught people in parables. He taught them things about the kingdom of God. And he taught his disciples about things of the kingdom of God. And you know in another place it says, Lord, teach us to pray. And he does. <coughs> he he sits down with them and he, he teaches them and gives them that outline of what we know as the Lord's Prayer or the disciples' pray. And the Throughout his ministry, Jesus is encouraging people, come and learn of me, come and learn of me, learn the principles of the kingdom, learn about the gospel, learn what I have to, to say for you. Because as you apply that to your lives, you will be different, you will be changed, you will have this radical change in your life. But as you do that, you will be seen to be a true disciple of Jesus, a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so whether he was dealing with his disciples or whether he was dealing with the crowds of the people that came along, they all required teaching. Now today we might think, oh, well, what we need is lots of miracles. Uh, what we need is for Jesus to feed the 5,000 again. Or, or what we need is uh, vast crowds to come and, and listen. And yeah, that, that that's right. And, and I'm sure that miracles and healings and 
all of these other things are very important and I believe they still play a part in our lives as Christians. But the thing that we really need is teaching. We need to be taught the principles of the kingdom of God. And I cannot encourage you enough this morning to pick up your Bibles, to go to the Bible study, to go to the preaching services in the church uh, or on a Sunday and, and to receive the word of God into your life. Because not only does the word save, but it keeps and it directs and it means that we are followers of Jesus. So today, as you are someone who's experienced a new beginning in God, can you be sure to be focusing on following and learning more about Jesus? For that's how he equips us to be the fishers of men that he wants us to be. See, there's a purpose in this. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So what he's saying is this, be my disciple, learn of me, follow me, accept my teachings, imitate me and who I am, and then you will be able to serve the purpose for which I've called you, to bring other people into the kingdom of God. I trust today that we are all being true disciples of Jesus and that we are learning and we are living for him. Let's pray. Father, we just ask this morning that you will help us to learn more about you and that we will uh, understand something more of you today and that we will, we, we will purpose in our hearts and our lives to spend more time uh, dwelling on you, learning about you and knowing the things that you would have us to do. Help us to be fishers of men, but help us, Lord, first of all, to be true followers of Jesus. We ask it in his name. Amen.